Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise in this moment. Let's thank God for life today. Let's thank God for health today. Let's thank God for strength today. We could have been anywhere else. Oh God, we thank you and we love you this morning. Father God, we come in your presence, God, looking for your face, oh God, asking you to meet us here in this room. Father God, I stand in the gap for every mother, every heart, God, that is open, Father God. I'm praying, God, that you will begin to open up the hearts and ears of the women of God in this room. And Father God, not just the women of God, but open up the ears of every hearer that is here today. And Lord God, I ask that you would minister life like only you can. Less of me, Father God, and more of you. Father God, let your will reign on the inside of me. Lord God, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. Father God, increase, Father God, your wisdom on the inside of me as I speak a word that you've given in my belly. Let me execute it with clarity and with simplicity in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise. Woo! I feel the anointing in this room this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Let's praise God today. Oh, God, I love you. Oh, God, I praise you. Oh, God, I magnify your name, Jesus. You alone are worthy, God. You alone are holy, oh, God. Oh, God, I honor your name, Jesus. Oh, there's nobody like you, oh, God. Oh, God, you keep my heart, Father God. You keep my mind, Father God. You're keeping my children, oh, God. Oh, God, I love you. Jesus. Woo. Oh God, I see, I see, I see. Woo. Oh God, we praise you and we love you. We honor your name today. You all may be seated in the house of God. It's my first time choosing to use this lapel. It feel all right now. I'm free, I'm free. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands though. <laughs> But um, I thank God for you all coming out this Mother's Day. I want to honor each and every mother that is in this room. I, I'm grateful for what God is doing on the inside of you and in your heart. Uh, if you came in here today expecting, God is going to meet that expectation. Because his word says he won't cut off our expectations. So if your heart is expecting to receive, God is here to give you exactly what it is that you need. Amen. Amen. So let's get ready to prepare uh, for this Mother's Day uh, message that I have prepared. Uh, one of the things I wanted to give was a quick history on Mother's Day uh, and where it came from. It was uh, created by a woman named Anna Jarvis in May of 1908. Um, she created Mother's Day as a memorial for her mother and everyone that was in attendance, she gave a carnation, which was her mother's favorite flower. This became something popular in various states. So an act of Congress was decided that the second Sunday in May would be Mother's Day. And this was put in position by President Woodrow Wilson. So officially Mother's Day began in 1914. So we're celebrating moms and I love Mother's Day and everybody seems to love Mother's Day because everybody shows up for their mama. Everybody love their mama, right? Yeah. This goes out to my mama. We love our mamas. Uh, all of us have a mother, uh, no matter where uh, we were raised. Maybe uh, our mothers hadn't raised us, or maybe we have a torn relationship with our mother. But nonetheless, all of us, none of us in here were test tube babies. All of us came from the womb of a mother. Uh, and God has designed mothers with a nurturing on the inside. Uh, what's something that is a caring and a gift? Uh, I hear somebody in the back of my head saying, well, my mother wasn't that caring and my mother wasn't so gifted. But I want to encourage you today 
that it's your opportunity, it's your time as a mother to pour into your children what you didn't have, what you, what you thought you should have received. It's your time to pour it into your children. I know Mother's Day is kind of one of those days that are up and down. Some people are celebrating their mothers and some people are grieving the loss of their mothers. We even have people in the room who are wanting to be mothers but have not obtained the promise of motherhood. There are variations of emotions in this room. People are on different waves, but I just want to meet you where you are and encourage you today. My goal, my ultimate goal today is to have you leave this place so stirred and so shook that you'll begin to change the lives of children all around your neighborhood. Then you'll not just go from your neighborhood, but then you'll go through the entire state speaking into the lives of children, not just your own children because this thing is bigger than us. This thing is a kingdom thing. And when we change our minds, and it's not about us forward no more, but it's about all the children. One of the things that I want to encourage you all is to support the children. Don't have anything bad to say when children are going bad, but then when we have youth takeover service, it's half of these people in this room. So you tell me you care for our children, but you're not there to support them when they're doing worship and when they're doing praise. Come on, somebody. Get this in your spirit and understand when you say you want to be behind the children because they are next generation. What we're living right now is what our parents taught us. And what our children will live in the next generation will be what we teach them. So what you want to see, you got to teach. What you want your children to become, you got to live. This thing is not about just you. It's a generational thing. We got to think beyond ourselves. I see, I see. We got to see past all this natural stuff. And my kids, and these are my four, and this is my two grandchildren. No, this is something that is bigger than us. We got to take hold of some children and put them under our wing. We got to get some children and teach them the ways of the Lord. Not just our children, but other children. But let's get into the word today. Y'all ready? Woo, I'm stirred. We're going to the book of Luke. And we're going to go to chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 39 through 45. Luke 1, 39, 45. I'm going to be reading out of the NASB for you all. It's on the screen, but I do encourage everybody to have your own Bibles. Read it for yourself. If you're there, say, I'm there. All right. Luke 1, uh, 39 through 45, it reads, Now at at this time, Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country, to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice and said, Bless are you among women, and bless is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord will come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has been spoken to her by the Lord. And I want to title this message. Can you make my baby leap? Can you make my baby leap? One of the things I wanted to uh, make clear today, because I think it happens so often, many times, us mothers, we always take care of everybody else. We got our children to be concerned about, We have uh, our husbands, for all of you all who are married. Uh, We have also church responsibilities. We have other things that we have to do. We have a lineup of stuff that happens in our life. And many times we go neglected mentally, spiritually. Uh, Many times we try to take care of everybody else. But when it's time for us to get what we need, we can't get what we need. And many times, it's all because we don't have the right support systems in place. We don't have the right people. 
We don't have the right friends. All of our connections are kind of cattywampus. We don't have those friendships that we need in our life to get us to the level that we need to get to. We have our girlfriend, our friend girls, our running partners, but they can't make our baby leap. We need people in our life as a mother People in our life that can stir us, people that can encourage us, people that can take us to the next level, not people that pity pat with us, not people that congratulate us in our mess, not people that is going to allow us to be old petty Betty and old stupid Susie, but we need people in our lives that's going to make our baby leap. Yes. And when I think about the baby inside of Elizabeth leaping at the very sound of Mary walking in the room. All Mary said was, hello. And the baby within uh, Elizabeth began to jump. Do we have friends in our life that when they come into our atmosphere and our sphere of influence that causes us to be encouraged? Do we have those type of friends that cause our baby to leap within us that our purpose comes alive just because they're in the room can you make my baby leap do you have the right people in your life to make your baby leap who are you connected to what are the friendships that you have who is it in your life that has influence over the things that you do can you make my baby leap can you get a prayer through on my behalf? Can I call you in the midnight hour and I know that I know that I know that you're going to pray and not roll over and go to sleep? Amen. Can you make my baby leave? Can something on the inside of you begin to charge something on the inside of me and purpose begin to be fulfilled in our life because we're connected with the purpose? Can you make my baby leave? In this story, and I'm going to give you a backdrop of what's happening here, uh, Elizabeth, she is an elder woman who has been spoken to by the Spirit of God that she would have a child. Her husband, whose name is, and y'all got to go back and read it because I know y'all not going to read it. Let me tell y'all where to find it. It's in the book of Luke chapter 1. Verses 5 through 45, write it down so you can go back and read it. Because I'm going to give you the east side quick version real quick. ERV, east side revelation version. Here is Elizabeth. She has this promise from God that she would have a child. This is something that she desired. She wanted to have a baby, her and her husband. They were uh, godly people. The scripture says that they lived by the law. They were people who loved the Lord. They were people who served in God's kingdom. So one day, her husband, Zachariah, was in uh, the temple doing his priestly duties because he was a priest. And also Elizabeth, who was one of the daughters of Aaron, she's also from a priestly bloodline. So here's Zachariah. He's in the temple uh, doing his alms and things. You know how Pastor Charles had the, the temple set up. He was in the brazen and the altar and doing all of this. And suddenly an angel showed up. The angel told him, Zachariah, you and your wife will have a child. So Zachariah looks and he questions the angel. So the angel wasn't so happy about that, so he struck Zachariah to be mute and dumb. He couldn't speak. He couldn't say nothing because God ain't wanting to put his mouth on what he told him. So here's Zachariah. He goes home. I don't know how he conveyed this to his wife. Obviously, he may have kind of just wrote it down or something, scribbled on a piece of paper. Hey, God said we're going to have a baby, and Elizabeth receives it. So for five months, she goes home. She's in her home. The scripture says that she is secluded for these five months. And in this five-month time, her cousin, and I guess we can call this the tale of two cousins, her cousin Mary comes and visits with her during this time. Mary also in a situation who had just been spoken to by an angel that she would conceive a child, which would be of the Holy Spirit, which would, she would then call his name. Jesus. So here we have two women spoken to by the Lord about a promise that was going to come to pass in their life. Two women, two promises, one purpose. 
These two women had a promise down on the inside of them. They had the purpose of God on the inside of them. Some of you all in this room, God has spoken something down in your belly. He has told you what you're going to do. And he has spoken a word to your spirit. And today I'm telling you, your baby is going to leap. And some of y'all might be nine months right now. You do any day. But you got to receive it. The promise is already yours. We are pregnant with a purpose. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm, pregnant I'm pregnant with a purpose. I'm pregnant. Now, with a purpose now. Lord, you heard that? Yeah. I got to make sure the Holy Spirit heard me. It's purpose on the inside of there. Yes, God pregnant a me and y'all pregnant too with the purpose amen and these two women had this thing in common they both had purpose on the inside of them one had the purpose of a child named John the Baptist one who would declare that the Lord of the host is coming and make way for the king of glory then another one was pregnant with the purpose of Jesus Christ the sanctifier our redeemer the one who's going to deliver us the one who has delivered us the one who is our keeper Two women, one purpose, connected together. We got to make sure that our connections are in the right place. They got purpose on the inside of them. Although they both have one purpose connected together, their purposes were still different. All of us in this room, although we got purpose on the inside of us, I can't have Marilyn's purpose. I can't have Keisha's purpose. I can't have Christelle's purpose. I can't have Lisa's purpose. I can only have Azalea's purpose on the inside of me. Although we all are pregnant, but I'm expecting something else. I can't have your baby. You can't have my baby. You know how the women say, well, oh, you care. You must be carrying a girl because girls sit like this or sit like that. No, that's not factual. In the spirit that I'm speaking of right now, all of us are carrying something, but our carrying is totally different. You can't carry your baby like I carry mine. You can't have the same goal that God has placed on my life. They may be connected. They may be intertwining, but you can't have my baby. You can't birth out what God has told me. I got to birth out. You can't have the baby that God has placed on the inside of me. God has put something on the inside of you and it's time for it to wake up. Yes. It's time for your baby to leave. When was the last time you had a time in the Holy Ghost where you felt the spirit of God stirring you on the inside? When was your last Holy Ghost encounter? Do you come to church and it's church as usual, but do you sit at the feet of Jesus waiting on a movement of God? Sometimes we got to cause that leaping that take place in our life. But if you sitting down, you don't cause anything to stir. That baby ain't moving. That baby comfortable. My used to be pregnant. We had two used to be pregnant. They, they done birthed them babies. Amen. Amen. Them babies done leaped out. But for my pregnant women, you know when that baby is so comfortable, as long as you don't eat nothing sweet, as long as you don't do anything, that baby going to ball up in that corner, all, all up under your rib, you know what I'm saying? And that's how many of us are right now. The purpose is there. It's only inside of you. But you've gotten so lazy and you've gotten to a point that can't nothing cause nothing to move on the inside of you. But I'm here to encourage you today to make your baby leap on the inside of you. Purpose come forth in the women of God. It's not about us. The leaping that has to take place in our belly is for the children. We got to leap so our baby can leap. We can't lead our children to purpose when we don't even know what ours is. We can't lead our children to walk in purpose when all we're doing is walking at home. We stand in the store. We're not doing anything for the kingdom of God. All we're doing is consuming. But I'm talking about a leaping on the inside of you. But you can't have my baby like I have mine. Let me get to my point. 
You can't carry your baby like I carry mine. All of us have a purpose, and all of our purpose will be fulfilled. But in order to get that purpose to be carried out, we all need someone who can make our baby leap. We all need somebody. Do you have somebody? Do you have people in your life that can encourage you? Do you have that, that one good girlfriend that you can call? Somebody who's not going to allow you to be uh, doing the things that you do because they understand the purpose and the assignment that is on your life. There is a connection that takes place in our lives that we really don't understand because we think that, oh, that's just a friend of mine. They're not affecting my family or my children. But can I say that your connections do matter? Who you're connected to does matter? Can I give you an example? Let me see. Give me a family. This is a nice old prime family right here. Come on, Minister Sam, Minister Robin, these two beautiful girls. Yes. She's like, I'm just visiting. Y'all trying to put me on Front Street today. Let's connect arms. Y'all know like we used to do with Red Rover. Red Rover, Red Rover. Send Cassie right over. And in this Red Rover connection, it's hard for things to penetrate. But also, because they're connected, what affects her ultimately affects everybody that is connected. So if I push her, guess what's happening? They moving too. So when mess is going on in her life, although you say, oh, well, that's just my friend, all of these connections are tied together. So what is affecting your friend now that mess is in your life and in your household, now your children going crazy and you don't even know why. It's your connection. So if I'm moving her, here they moving. I'm pulling her this way, guess what's gonna happen? Because all of them are connected, this whole line is moving. So daddies, let me tell you something. As you lead your family the right way, I know it's Mother's Day, but I got to drop a seed for my daddies. As you lead your family the right way, as you move, they move. And everything that's connected to your life is going to cause a trickle-down effect in every single thing that you do. So if you're dating a fool, guess what? Your children are affected by it. If you're on running the streets, pipping, clubbing, and thugging, guess who's affected? Your children are affected by it. If you have somebody in your life, they can cause all kind of harm if we don't watch our connection. Thank y'all for your demonstration. <laughs> connection, connections. Y'all saw the connection? Yes. So you understand why it does matter who you're connected to? It does matter what connections and relations you have because if you let anybody in and out of your life, your children see that. When you let anybody in and out of your life, you're setting a pattern. What pattern do we want our children to follow? Do we want them to follow the pattern of a loose life? They see you. Do you want them to follow the, parent, the pattern of uh, a life that is without God? Because they see that. They see you come to church on Tuesday or Sunday and praise the Lord. Then they see you go home and live any way you want to live. They see that. You're connected to the wrong things in your life. And what that connection does, it causes a trickle-down effect all the way to your children. But we got to be connected to the things of God. We got to have our life so in tune with what God is doing to when the enemy tries to come in, we recognize those connections and we let them go. Any connections y'all need to let go? Sometimes we got to have some friends. Bye-bye. Sometimes we got to have some various relationships. Goodbye. Sometimes there are some things and some people that are connected to us that don't mean us any good. Yeah. We got to piece them out. Yeah. Bye. For the sake of my children, bye. Amen. You got to go, bye. I'm doing this for me and my family, bye. 
We got to say goodbye to those things that are going to cause our family harm. Some of us already know the damage that can be done because our parents had the wrong connections. Some of us women or some of us boys even are sitting in this room molested by your mama boyfriend because of the connection. It got real quiet, but I can guarantee you the, there's a statistic that says every one in 10, no five, one in five women have been molested. So you trying to tell me that that connection, that bad connection is not in this room today? Somebody made the mistake to bring a fool into the home and did not have discernment enough because they didn't have anything in their belly to understand that connections matter in your life. Don't put your children in harm's way. Open up your eyes, woman of God. Open up your eyes, man of God, so that you can hear clearly. Get somebody in your life that's going to cause your baby to leap up on the inside of you so purpose can be birthed and established in your life so that things can begin to flow and flow the way God intended them to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go back to the story and let's look at some of the things that transpired in this message. Let's go to Luke 1, 39, 45 again. And it says, now at the time, Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to stop right there because I want to let you all see that it wasn't anything that Mary said per se. But it was just a simple greeting that caused that baby to leap on the inside of her. It was just the Holy Spirit inspired in her speaking that calls Elizabeth's baby to leave. When we go on our jobs, can we be the one that calls somebody baby to leave just by saying, good morning, Amen. hello, how are you, good morning, hi, good to see you. And people feel the Holy Ghost just because you're on that job and walking up and down those aisles. You can be the one to call somebody baby to leave. It didn't say she came in preaching, but after she began to speak and say hello, guess what Elizabeth began to do? An exchange happened. Elizabeth began to prophesy. Do you got some friends that can stir you up enough that it'll cause you to start speaking the word from the heavenlies? Your friends show up and say, hey, good morning. You say, oh, it is a good morning. I declare and decree that this morning will be the best morning that we have all week long. God is going to do something in this office. God is going to stir something up. You see the exchange? It's an exchange that happened. It had nothing. They weren't trying to conjure anything up. And I think we get all mystical sometimes and feel like, oh, we got the boot. She must have been praying at five. And then after she prayed at five, she got dressed and was still praying. Then after she got through praying, she got in the car. She kept praying all the way to work and then or to Elizabeth. Oh, well, back then they were walking. She walked all the way to Elizabeth's house. And then that's why the spirit of God left. No, the spirit of God was on her life. It was a lifestyle for her. It was something that was consuming her. That's why God chose Mary to carry his child. It was a lifestyle. We got to live in such a way that we can just live this thing out loud and people begin to want to follow us everywhere we go. We can do it. Mama, you can do it at home. It don't take much. All you got to do is live your life before your children. Let them see you praising God. Let them see your commitment to the house of God. Let them see you reverencing the things of God. Simple as that. When you mess up, say, hey, I missed it, because you're not going to be perfect. But when you mess up, at least tell them I messed up. Don't be, I ain't did that. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> them kids know you just got through cussing. <laughs> you in there talking about, ooh, mm -mm, I said, Holy Ghost. No, you didn't. 
Just admit it so that the, you, what is it? Admit it so you can quit it. <laughs> admit it so you can quit it. Let's live a life so full that when we encounter people that we can cause their babies to leap. Let's go back to the story. I wanted to talk a little bit more about connections and how uh, it's vital in our life. Uh, Jesus even understood the importance of connection. Uh, let's go to, I know I'm skipping tech team, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go to Mark 5, 37 through 42, and I want to let you all see a demonstration of connection and how uh, it's okay to tell somebody to go. Mark 5, 37 through 42. And this is Jesus, uh, the backdrop of this story. Uh, Jesus was summoned to go to a synagogue leader's home because the, his daughter was at the verge of death. And it says, and he allowed no one to accompany him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the synagogue official, and he saw a commotion and people loudly weeping and wailing. And entering in, he said to them, why make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but is asleep. They began laughing at him, but putting all of them out. He took along, he took along the father and the mother and his other own companions and entered the room where the child was. Taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talitha Kuma, which translates me. Little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl got up and began to walk, for she was 12 years old, and immediately they were completely astonished. Here in this story, we see the importance of connection. Jesus had 12 disciples, but yet on this journey, he only took three. You understand connection? Everybody can't go where you're going. Yeah, they in your outer circle. They are your friends, but everybody can't go where you're going. Every can't, everybody can't be in that inner connection. Can you imagine Jesus walking and he got all these extra people? Everybody asking 50,000 questions. Jesus, they said she was dead. You sure you want to go? He knew James, Peter, James, and John weren't going to ask all these questions. They was going to get the job done, and they were going to make sure that Jesus had everything he need, and they were going to go on their journey. Sometimes you got to cut out the naysayers, those that are laughing, they don't understand your purpose. They don't know what God is doing in your life. It's okay, but you're not going in where I'm going. So if we understand connection and Jesus understood connection, not that he isolated the other, how many it is, three from 12, not that he isolated the rest, nine. nine, not that he isolated the other nine, but he knew where he was going. He said, John, come on, Jane, come on, Peter, come on, let's go. Because he know in those three, it wasn't no murmuring. It wasn't any complaining. It wasn't people saying, well, why you do that? Who said that? None of those things. It was people who were focused and he didn't have to ask no questions. So if you know where God is taking you, you have to understand that all of the crowd can't go in the inner circle. So take a minute, do an inventory. Take a minute, who are you connected with? Are the ones in your immediate circle, can they get a prayer through? Can they encourage you? Can they keep you? Can they help you through your ups and ebbs and flows of life? Or is it somebody who just there? You always pouring into them. You always gotta give a word. But can they make your baby leap? Can you have friends or do you have friends in your life that can make your baby leap? Why all of your friends waiting on you for the word? If you're the smartest one in your group, I've heard it said you're in the wrong group. Plain and simple. You have to get away from those with the problem. Hang with those who have the answers and solutions. If everybody in your group got the problems, you got the wrong connection. Ain't no leaping going on. 
Nobody is stirring you. Nobody is causing you to want to do anything for God. If your group is telling you, girl, you ain't got to do all that. Wrong circle. Let that settle in. If your circle is telling you it don't take all of that. Wrong circle. You need people in your life who's going to say it takes that and more. It takes that and prayer. It takes that and believing. Sometimes it takes that and fasting because the word of God says some of these only can come out through fasting and prayer. You need people who can speak into your life to cause your baby to leave. Can you make my baby leave? That's what I'm looking for. I can't afford to have any connections in my life that is not going to stir the purpose of God on the inside of me. I got too many lives at stake. I got too many people depending on me. I got too many people that I need to go after with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you can't hang with me and you can't make my baby leap, too bad I got to go. Let's take our mind, mamas, to understand that the people in our life have to cause our baby to leap. Don't settle for those backdoor friends. Don't settle for those backdoor connections. Don't settle for those shoulda, coulda, woulda friends or girl, you remember back in the day? I'm not reminiscing about anything if it's not about kingdom. If it's not a kingdom agenda, no, I don't remember. Those were some hellion days. I've been delivered. Find you somebody who's going to speak to the purpose and the plan of God on your life. Somebody who's going to say to you, woman or man of God, God has, has a great purpose on your life. God has called you to do this, this, and the third. God has a purpose on you. You don't need to be smoking. You don't need to be drinking. Do your friends and Kurt, girl, you need a smoke, child. You had a long day. Girl, get that bottle. You don't need those kinds of friends in your life. You need those ones that's going to cause your baby to leap on the inside of you. The ones who can speak a word and have your hands raised in the presence of God. I need people in my life who's going to encourage me, speak a word, and cause me to want to be better than I already am. And if they can't do that, y'all looking at me strange because y'all know y'all got some of those friends. They finna call you tonight. You know they got two for one for mothers tonight. Yes. Girl, let's hit it. Oh. Drinks on me. Oh, Mother's Day. Eh, eh. Girl, you bad. Ooh. We got them. They're in your corner. They're waiting on you. they like, what time you get out of church? Okay, so tonight you go home and take your nap. And then tonight we're going to get that two for one for mothers. Mothers get in free. Eh. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's there. It's in the house. Because I've already prayed, God only let me say what you need for me to say. So when I speak out of my mouth, it's in the house. So I want you all to understand. Let's give God some praise about that. We got to understand our connections. We got to know that everybody in our life is not going where we're going and it's okay. But if you can't make my baby leap, then I can't have association with you that way. Yes, I can minister to you, but you can't be my ride or die. You can't be the one that I go to for my advice. You can't be the one I get counsel from. You and your husband divorcing. Why am I getting counsel from you about my man? Can you make my baby leave? Can you, when I pick up the phone and tell you I have issues in my relationship, will you speak to me and say, have you prayed? What did you do? What was your issue in the matter? Because there's always more than one side to a story. Most of the time it's three. Your side, his side, and the truth. So what are you saying? When you pick up the phone and you call your girlfriend and you let her know, girl, I seen this dude. Woo. Baby, he said he, um, he made uh, 120000 yeah, he, he, he work at CSS, girl, yes. Mm-hmm. He got that long money, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh, let me tell you what he was driving, yes. 
Oh, mm-hmm. Is your girlfriend going to say, is he saved? Come on. Us, the first response to be, ooh, girl, you done hit the jackpot. <laughs> Will he say, is, is he born again? Okay, is he telling you that or do he go to church for real? Because one of the funny things that my niece told me <laughs> when we were together on Christmas, she said, when I met Todd, he invited me to church. And she said, so I started coming to church and the people ain't know who he was. <laughs> it was a facade. He knew that she was looking for a man of God and that she wanted somebody who went to church. Now he don't even go. She still made the mistake. I ain't gonna say that, I'm on the line. This shitty, uh. Find you somebody who's gonna chase God with you. Whether it be friends, whether it be in relationship, no matter where you're going, find somebody who's gonna chase God with you. If they're not a God chaser, then they can't chase you. We got to make sure we fix our mind to find people that will cause our babies to leap. Husbands, you can make your wife baby leap as well. Speak a word into your woman of God. Let her know she's blessed. Tell her that God has created her and she's perfectly fitted for you. Speak a word over her life each and every morning when she gets up. Let her know she's beautiful every single day even if she got slob coming out of her mouth. Love on her. Treat her right. Make her baby leap. Can you make my baby leap? Can you? Can you? If I needed you, if there is something that I needed from God, can I depend on you to make my baby leap? Can you give me a word that will encourage me? I know I can call Minister Robin and make my baby leap, jump over troops and walls. This woman is full of the word of God. Find some friends who are going to make your baby leap. Not friends that's going to tell you, oh, you don't need to do this or that. Oh, that's not called for. Oh, you don't have to do this. Why are you doing that? Mmm. Pastor said, what? Mmm. If that's the response, mm, that's a problem. Can you make my baby leap? Can you encourage me when I'm down? When I'm going through, can you be there for me? I need you, sister. I need you in my life. I need friends in my life that's going to cause my baby to leap. It's your time. It's time for your baby to leap. Stop worrying about what your past used to be. Stop worrying about the things that you can't take care of. But today, I know somebody, y'all might be thinking, well, my baby inside of me is dead. I haven't had anybody to speak a word. I haven't felt encouraged. I haven't felt God move in so long that I think my, my purpose is still born. But I want to speak to your belly right now. Woman of God, it's not over. Your time is now. Your time is today. Today is the day of your deliverance. Today, your baby will leap. Today, the purpose and assignment that is on your life, it will come to pass. God has something for you to do. It's not too late. I don't care if you 65, I don't care if you 70, it's not too late. God has something planned for your life. He has something that he wants you to do. I'm here to speak to your baby, the purpose that is on the inside of you and cause it to leap today. Let's get on our feet. And I want every eye closed in this room. And I want us to do a self-inventory of our hearts. Let's go within. Let's, let's go in that secret place. Let's go to that place that we know we haven't had the opportunity 
for our purpose to come alive because we haven't allowed it to. I didn't say that it can't. I said you haven't allowed it to. Purpose is on your life. God has called you for a time as this. What is it that God has called you to do? Is it to minister to children? Is it to minister to the women of God? Is it for you to minister to the homeless? Is it for you to work in marriage ministry? Is it for you to serve in the house of God? What is it that God has told you on the inside of you that you haven't caused that baby to leap on the inside of you? Today is your day. Today is your day. Yes, it is your day. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I want you to know that you don't have to leave the same way that you came. That purpose is here. And if you're looking for God to stir something up on the inside of you today, I encourage you to come. Come now, come now, come now, come now. Come now while the waters are being stirred. I want you to come expecting because today is your day of deliverance and that baby that is on the inside of you that has been laying dormant, that thing that has been on the inside of you and you have not stepped out in it. Today is your day for that thing to come alive. It's your day. Let God cause that baby to leap on the inside of you. Don't stay stuck. Don't stay stagnant. I'm speaking to your baby right now like the voice of Mary. Baby, leap on the inside of the women of God today. Stir up every gift in their heart, Father God. Move on the inside of them. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that every hindering spirit that tries to come against the women of God, I pray, God, that you would lift, Lord God, every boundary, every barrier, everything that causes them to feel stuck, everything that causes them to feel like they can't get to the next level, everything that tries to keep them from going over to your glory side. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that there are babies on the inside of them. What you put in them, what you purpose for them to do, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for each and every woman that is here today. Father God, show them direction. Give them, Lord God, divine instruction on the thing that you've called them to do. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's give God a hand clap of praise.